everybody, welcome back to another round of Sal's Comic Corner. Today I am bringing you my haul from Baltimore Comic Con. You may have seen, uh, uh, I mean, promote uh, me being at the con with Codex Station. With Codex Station, by the way, check them out. Any social media at the Codex Station uh, or at the go to the www.thecodexstation.com to check us out. Yes, there's going to be a huge video uh, from the Baltimore Comic Con, but this is the first con that we all got together. Met some guys in real life, hadn't seen them before, in person, till, to that, till we got together for the con. It was a great time. I had a epic score uh, on my uh, for myself. There's some back history, some backstory, of course. I'll give you all that in the video as I show you the books. Alright, so let's go ahead and get to it. Alright, everybody, here's the video for my Baltimore Comic Con uh, haul. All right, so first off, let me tell you my goals. I had three particular books in mind that I was looking for, hunting for. Uh, I, if I had gotten one of the books, I got them all. If I had gotten one of the books, uh, I would be happy, but um, I did end up scoring a, a big time on them. But as a bonus, I actually took some slabs that I was no longer attached to, and one high dollar slab that I was on the fence about but they got a good price for it so I sold about 12 slabs got some good cash and then I turned around and used that cash to buy all these books so it was amazing and I think I still came back with like 100 120 uh, still in my pocket so bonus uh, you know always all right so first on my list to get this was the number one book I wanted to get this book raw or graded uh, and let me tell you on Friday you get to check out the vendors, you know, the vendors are there, mostly it's just vendors and, and the big time buyer guys type of thing. There's not much cosplay going on that day, it's Friday, it's, you know, it's a work day for most people. And um, going around, kept asking for this book, kept asking for us, no one had it. And I was getting pissed off because I couldn't find it, but then uh, the next day I ended up finding it, I guess the comic gods heard my complaints, and then well, on Saturday... Every vendor had this book, or at least I could find this book for every vendor. So here it is, Green Lantern, number 87. First appearance of Jon Stewart, got it slabbed as an 8-0 from CGC. This is amazing. This shows really well. There's no visible tears or bends on it. It says off-white pages, but you know what? Damn, it looks great. And it's a, it's a big key book for me, and I love it. I'm... <laughs> Cha-ching! Scratch one off the list. Let me put this guy right over here. So, next on my list to get was X-Men 94. Now, this one I was looking for because this this is a pretty key book. It's the first issue of the uh, new X-Men team uh, you know, in the series, and I only need GSX now. GSX 1 to complete that uh, whole that run, but from my X-Men run, uh, now it goes from number 88 to, to 544, I believe it was, for volume one. So, getting closer. Now I'm scattered in the X-Men uh, uh, early, earlier volume, I'm um, sorry, volume one, earlier issues. I'm scattered about, so I've got some other ones in there. I'll show you those to you as well. So, pick that up. Now, Sunday. Was it Sunday I got this one? I believe it was Sunday. Sunday, I'm walking around and I'm like... Looking for looking, you know, just kind of like window shopping. I was happy I got those two books, and I'm just like passing by, and then I saw this book. Now, this book he had it for he had it graded, and he also had it raw. But this is Green Lantern number 59, first appearance of Guy Gardner. This is an awesome book. It's a beautiful copy. It is. It's got some spine ticks. Uh, one, two, three, four. Four spine ticks that I could see right off the top of my head, right there. And it's got a little indentation on the um, the double E's, uh, but I'm not worried about that. Uh, I will probably take this to my um, presser guy, Kent Hubs. Check him out, Kent Hubs. Go to thecodexstation.com, go to Friends of Codex. I have a link to him. He always uh, helps me out with uh, books, with pressing and cleaning, does a fantastic job. I got some books back from him just, just after the con, unfortunately, I probably would have taken them too. but. Uh, I've got some more books, some vintage books, which CGC is dragging their feet on, as usual. But I've got some seats, uh, vintage books coming back through him as well. So I'm definitely going to take this to him, but this was a great book. Now, Slad, he had this thing, Slad, uh, uh, gosh, I want to say it was a either 8.5 or a 9, but it was like 
a couple of grand. And I'm like, yeah, no, can't do that. But then right next to the slab was this raw copy. And I'm like, how much is that raw copy? Now he had it listed at 300, but I actually, I brokered a little deal with him, got it for a little bit cheaper because I was paid cash. Cash is king. And whenever, you know, you go to a con and they say, oh, bring cash, do it. Cash is king. You can always knock a couple of dollars off the sale, you know? Absolutely. So, um, now not from the same vendor, but I picked up a couple of earlier Green Lantern issues, number 75. Not really a key issue, but it was, uh, you know, one I didn't have in my book. And actually, no, that's not a key. And um, this one is more of a key than anything else. This was number um, 89, and this is part of the Hard Traveling Hero storyline. Folks, if you've not read the Green, Lantern, uh, Green Arrow Hard Traveling Hero storyline, you have to read it. Read it online, get it digitally. Uh, if you ha if you must, it is an amazing story about uh, storyline. It talks about drug abuse. It talks about all that type of stuff and really real world situations with these heroes. And it is amazing. Go check it out. Hard traveling heroes. Now, so went to another vendor um, that was doing some marking some books down. Let me get them right here. Get them right here. And uh, so the price has a slash through it, which means it was half off. So I was trying to you know. Spend a little bit of cash, but not too much cash. Let me start off with these first, and then I'll get to this one last. So I picked up Amazing Spider-Man 295. You know, I uh, got 292. Whoops. There we go. 292. 291. What's, what's that, Stiltman? Yeah, it's, no, this, that's still the Spider Slayer. Sorry. It looked like Stiltman for a second. Uh, and then 287. And then, unfortunately, in my rush to like pick up books, I picked up another 287 from the same vendor. Yes, I did. But, however, if you look, one is a direct, one is a newsstand. So, technically, they're still different. And then, uh, the way that price was working out, I was trying to round it up to, to I think it was 40 bucks all total. And uh, I couldn't find another book that was like $4. But, uh, Dan Kelly... Uh, my partner in crime on this one, he was with me at the same stand and saw this Daredevil number 91. Pretty awesome cover, and that sealed the deal and made it round up to a nice even number of uh, 40 bucks for all those issues. So that was pretty cool. Next up, this was a, um, a stand or, or a booth called Half Price Comics. So everything in here was half, everything they had boxed there was half price. Slabs, books that are, had signatures, didn't matter. It was whatever, whatever whatever price it was all marked on it, it was half off. So, I picked up these really cool Adam Strange books, and it's signed uh, uh, by um, da -da 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 Andy Kubert as well. You can see that right there. I know this is wicked, and this is book two. I did not find book three, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to put that by. Yep, signed by Aunt Adam Kubert. Yep, both of them, and. Um, I'll have to walk for book three and get that added to the collection. Those are pretty badass covers. So, all right. So that was pretty cool. And then I went to the slab section. <laughs> and I picked up a Venom number 23. Yes, Venom number 23, slab down 98. That is beautiful. Look at that. Now, the case is really scuffed up, as you can tell. So what I'm going to do is send this off to be reholdered and come back and then boom, on the wall it will go. That's just a badass cover. Look at that. Awesome. Great stuff. So, while I, um, when I was picking up, um, that X-Men 94, I think, I think it was this, this one. Yeah, this one. I also scored this X-Men 44, which was cool. So that adds, adds another, adds another book to that. Now, however, as I'm going through the con that day, and I'm like, you know, having a, you know, I'm on like cloud nine because I picked up all those books and scoring some good stuff. I accidentally picked up another X-Men number uh, 44. So this is in less greater, uh, less quality wise. This one's really nice. Look at that. Yeah, that one's really nice. I guess the Gerber bags do really make it pop more, but that's okay. Picked up an extra one. Doesn't matter. This next one is also from the same stand. Uh, that was Warthog Comics. So let me give them a shout out here. Warthog Comics, check them out. I got that X-Men 94, that other X-Men book, uh, number 44, and then this one right here, number 25. Look at that. 
Is that not beautiful or what? That's awesome. So, that does fill in some gaps for X-Men. Oh, I'm sorry. One more. One more. One more. And it's X-Men number 53. Check that out. So, that was cool. That was awesome. Now, some freebies. Well, this wasn't really a freebie. Uh, this one is Flash Gordon number one. Now, this is uh, not the standard Flash Gordon that you would... That's in uh, currently going on. Let me get the card out here really second quick. Uh, this is Lewis Southard. Uh, he's a comic book writer creator. He is um, creating what they call the Flash multiverse. So, it sounded like a cool storyline. This is actually a picture of King Voltan. So, uh, he's going to shoot for it coming out quarterly. He signed it for me. He says two Salad Slab guys. You can see right there, which was pretty cool. I haven't read it yet. Sounded really interesting. Went ahead and I got picked it up. Five bucks. Not bad. This one was actually a freebie. And I'll just tell you, tell you who it was. It is uh, Comics on the Edge, SHP Comics, uh, Sean Hainsworth. Sean Hainsworth. Good guy. He would come around and he was promoting this book called Woodstake. So it looked pretty cool. Uh, look for him on the Codex station. We're probably going to have him on to do an interview and talk with him about his book and do that type of stuff. So look for that on the Codex station for sure. Now, here's a really cool book, and this is one of the ones that got one of the, um, I, that I got signed. I got two books I actually stood in line and got signed for. This one, awesome book, awesome series. Um, if you ever watch the uh, Codex stations with me on there, my friend Uncle Gary, he's the one that got me on, back onto the Incredible Hulk series. But this is Incredible Hulk number eight with the Ghost Rider 44 on the cover. So I had John uh, Philip Kennedy uh, Johnson. John, yeah, John Philip Kennedy Johnson. Johnson. I gotta get that right. Uh, I signed the book, and I have him signed for Sal the Slab Guy, of course. But that is an awesome book. Look for more uh, Ghost Rider 44 material coming out. Probably the end of this year, start next year. Awesome series. You have to read it. And I feel like Hulk has gone back to old school horror on that series, and it is amazing. Okay. Next one up, this was the um, the Knoxville Nirvana Comics uh, exclusive cover of Scarlet Number 1. That's a great cover. That is a great cover. But this one was actually drew, uh, drew by Deegan, and he will also be on the Codex Station doing an interview. But he got him to sign it. Did I say, yep, I haven't signed it to sell the slab guy right there. Look at that. Pretty awesome. But that's a great cover. That is awesome. So, one more thing to show. Let me, uh, oh, actually, two more things to show. <laughs> You're not going to get away with that. So let me get this uh, card out of the way because this is an awesome print. Oh, uh, this was the gentleman next to us in the booth next to us. Uh, his name is William Anderson, and he does a bunch of prints, and he even has a comic book uh, series himself. But look at this blade print. Look at this. Is that not amazing? That is fantastic. His prints were awesome. <sighs> Here is his card, by the way. You can go ahead and check him out, William Anderson. He is on all the socials, so just search him out there, you know. Here's the QR code. If you want to pause it, try to screen cap that, and then check him out, do so. You will not be disappointed. His stuff is amazing. Great guy, too. It was really fun to talk to, you know, and, you know, during the slow times when no one was coming around the booth time. Anyhow. So, on Saturday, I saw this one. And I waited till Sunday. The Superman vs. The Flash. This is the treasury size edition. The limited collector's edition presents the greatest race of all time. Superman vs. The Flash. Uh, he was pretty firm in his price. He wanted 45 I got him the 40 So I said, okay, I'll take it. $40, I don't think was a bad deal for this book. But add it to the treasury editions that I have already there. Alright. That concludes my Baltimore Comic Con haul. It was amazing. Uh, that's the first time I actually was at a con for three days straight, number one. that was This is the first time I was actually helping run the table. We traded off. We went book hunting for a couple hours, came back, sat at the table for a couple hours. So we all traded. No one was actually left at that table for too long, which was great. However, that was the first time I was at three days. And at the end, on Sunday night, I was so exhausted. I just did not want to move. I almost didn't make it to my bed. I came, lay down on the couch for a few minutes. I said... 
I told my wife, I'll, I'll be here five minutes, then, then I'll then I'll go to bed. And boom, I was out like a light. There was just no second guessing that part. Anyhow, that was the first time I did all three days, first time hosting a table, uh, and it was amazing. Baltimore Comic Con, folks, you got to check it out. This was a great, it's a great con because you can meet a lot of artists, you can meet a lot of creators, you can get a lot of comic books. There's some pop culture stuff there, and there's a lot of cosplay there, of course, but I feel like this con focuses on the books and focuses on the creators, and it, it's amazing. So, even if you do one day, even if you do one day, do the Baltimore Comic Con, all right? All right, folks, thank you very much for sticking around and watching this video. I'm Salus Lab Guy. You've been watching an episode of Salus Comic Corner. Thank you very much. Make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe. Do my channel a favor and let me get this content out to more people. All right, folks, hope you guys have a 9.8 day.